so we're going to be joined now by uh, Nadine Siriga, who's the, the founder of uh, Generation Girl, uh, a group within uh, Indonesia um, encouraging girls to consider a, a career in technology. And we're going to run this as a, as a conversation with our uh, leader of the Women and APIs initiative, um, Claire, Claire Barrett. Um, I'm, I've got Nadine. Hi. Welcome, Nadine. And, Thank you so um, much for having me. Uh, uh, very, very pleased to have you here. Um, and we're going to have Claire in a moment. I think she's just joining us. Welcome, Claire. Sorry about that. Just had a uh, an unusual problem, but we're back. That's okay. Good, morning, good afternoon. How are you? Very good. So uh, I guess people have been learning about um, organisations uh, and how they how they transform themselves, and uh, the conversation uh, here is going to be about how you um, build a, a, a diverse um, workforce. Um, starting from from the grassroots because if you don't have people at the at the start of that journey you won't have um, career progression uh, through it so uh, very very interested in hearing the conversation thank you john and uh, delight delight to be here uh, by way of a quick introduction my name is claire barrett i'm at apis first and i make strategy happen uh, i'm also privileged to uh, co-lead the Women in APIs initiative, an opportunity uh, for people to uh, showcase their talents and experience and share their stories with the technology community and the API community specifically at large. Um, we believe uh, strongly that the, uh, the opportunity for uh, people to be able to share their experiences builds their profile uh, builds their uh, credibility within their teams and that that encourages more people to uh, feel included and that overall the tech community has an opportunity to better reflect the diversity of the uh, the world at large, if you like. Um, and uh, I know that Nadine Siriga at uh, Generation Girl shares this, uh, this broader vision, but she's working uh, on at the very outset uh, for girls in schools. Welcome, Nadine, to API Days, Jakarta, and and please tell us a bit about share a bit about your uh, the amazing work that you've been doing in the last couple of years. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Claire, and API Days um, for for inviting me. This is really exciting. This is my first API Days, so um, yeah, excited to meet everyone. Um, so I actually uh, work for or I founded a nonprofit organization based in Jakarta, Indonesia, called Generation Girl. Um, our aim is basically to equip girls with the hard and soft skills to become future leaders. Um, and we focus a lot on male dominated fields, starting with STEM, science, technology, engineering and math. Um, and that's actually something that has a very personal um, story or a personal connection with myself, as well as most everyone else on my team. Um, all of us have either studied in uh, some sort of STEM field or uh, have worked in a startup industry. Um, so we are all really, really, you know, passionate about making sure that the female voice is really represented in these fields. Um, and we've been around for about two ish years. Um, since then, we've had about 2000 active participants and about 18,000 followers um, on our Instagram, LinkedIn and Twitter pages. So really exciting. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I mean, that is an extraordinary uh impact to to have uh, made so quickly can you tell us a little bit about what this impact is what do the girls um get involved in uh, at, mm -hmm. uh on, when they join up and sign up for one of your programs yeah so we actually have a bunch of programs starting as early as middle school and high school girls um so our original program the first one that we ever started with was uh, a program for the middle school and high school girls where we teach them different topics of um science and technology uh, during their school holidays. So every week, it would be about a four to six week program depending on their school holidays. And every week we would um, teach them, you know, how to build a website, how to build a mobile app um, about animation, UI, UX, um, just to really broaden 
their perspective and their view of what technology and what STEM really is and to try to get them to see that, you know, even if they don't think that they could do it, they actually do have a place in these fields. Um, so it's less about, you know, really drilling them on, um, you know, you have to get this right and like you have to learn how to build an incredible, amazing website in a week, but it's more like, here's something new, here's a new opportunity for you, for you to learn, and this is something that you can actually do. Um, and it's actually incredible because we'd never found, um, or we never thought that we could get them to see how um, impactful these programs really are, but they just keep coming back. So um, we've been growing our programs since then uh, from just the holiday clubs to um, weekend classes as well, um, and also prolonged programs with our partners uh, where we actually give them the same curriculum that um, our partnered companies give to um, their interns as well, actually. That's amazing to be able to, to give people that experience. and. Um, uh, you explained to me too about how uh, you get parents involved and that mm -hmm. this is pushing into some of the uh, you know, maybe unconscious bias or, or preconceptions that people have about opportunities for girls in, in, in state and computer science in particular. Mm -hmm. um, how, how's that, how does that work for them? What do you, what do, you do to bring them along? Yeah, so um, this is this was actually something that we uh, from the beginning had always knew we needed to do was to get the parents really involved in the impact that we were making to their daughters. Um, I think this stemmed from my own personal experience, but also the experience of all of my other co-founders. Um, I graduated with um, a BS in computer science. Uh, and when I was declaring my major, I remember uh, a lot of my family members, especially like my aunts and uncles, they were like, you know, why are you doing something so difficult? Like, why don't you just uh, focus on um, just getting a degree, whatever degree it is, the easiest one, because it's just like a piece of paper, right? Like, you're just going to get married and have kids anyway in a couple years after you graduate. Um, that was really the box that they put me in was that, you know, women cannot excel or they shouldn't excel in these male dominated fields and instead this is the box that you have to be in and that box is okay if it fits you but if it doesn't then you know it, it should be expanded a little bit so that it, it does um, include a lot of other hopes and dreams that i know a lot of other women have um, and so now I, I actually just finished my master's or i haven't finished yet i haven't graduated but i i turned in my thesis for oh, my I master's and I remember that um, my my parents as well and my, and my family as well, they said the same thing. They were like, you know, why are you getting your master's? Why are you going into higher education if you should be focusing on, you know, starting a family, finding a husband and all this stuff? And the only reason that I got my, um, my family uh, on board with getting my higher education was that, you know, they were like, oh, okay, you can find a husband when you're there kind of thing. So um, I do have a lot of personal experience with dealing with the, you know, having family that isn't very supportive of um, my chasing my dreams. Um, so that's kind of why the like, that's kind of why we thought it was really important to have the parents really involved. And how we do that is at the end of every week, the girls have a demo day where they showcase the products that they created. So if it was, you know, a mobile app class, they would show the app that they built throughout the week. Um, and we invite the parents to actually come and see this, the girls work, um, because it really shows them and it really encourages them that their daughters can actually excel in these fields and that they should be encouraged to go into these fields and that they're going to be okay if they go into these fields. Um, I know that a lot of parents do have that concern of like, oh, is my daughter going to be okay? Like it's a male dominated field. I don't know if she can do this. Um, so I think having them involved as part of the process um, is really encouraging for them. And we've had a lot of really great feedback from a lot of the girls, but a lot of the parents as well being like, oh, I didn't know that my daughter could do this. Now I actually really want her and I'm gonna push her to continue going into um, technology or into STEM. So it's really exciting to see that kind of mind shift change um, between not just the, the girls, but the parents themselves as well. Oh, that's great. And, and you know, just opening people's eyes to the opportunities um, and uh, being in a supportive environment can, certainly make people feel, uh, yeah, they can, perhaps they're not quite challenging, you know, they're not uh, break, breaking out, they're breaking out in a safe way, if you like. Yes, 
Exactly. And I think one of the things that we can do or that we do do uh, very well for, for the girls is to encourage them, but also tell them, like what you said, that this is a safe space, right? We're a safe community. If you do want to go try something else, however we can help you, we will try. Um, we've actually had a lot of girls um, coming to us being like, oh, I don't know what I want to major in or like, oh, I'm already majoring in this, but I'm looking for internship opportunities. Can you help us? And, uh, you know, just by way of uh, that direct contact with them, we can really help them uh, and support them in their in their careers in these fields, which is really, really exciting to see the growth of like these girls who came to us as high schoolers and now they're in university and they're already looking for internship opportunities um, in these fields. So it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I feel very old. <laughs> and great, great to keep in touch with them. Um, and to, talking about as they are um, getting into the workforce, uh, mm -hmm. you um, uh, your, your own experience as a software engineer, um, you know, going into the workforce and, uh, you know, as a bit of a minority, um, probably uh, be interesting to share because we get a lot of questions from uh, male colleagues about um, uh, what they can do to create a more inclusive environment at work um, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, what they can be doing to, to help, if you like. Um, what are some of your experiences in a you know, as a minority um, member of a software engineering community, uh, did you get what did you get from uh, um, your male colleagues that uh, made a difference for you? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I definitely like to always spin this question in a more positive way because I did have a lot of negative experiences, but there were also a lot of positive experiences that came out of it as well, and I think I came out a lot stronger on the other side too. Um, so. I remember when I first starting when I was first starting out as a software engineer, I was one of thirty engineers and the only only female um, it, on on my team. And so I I was also the youngest though, so I, I feel like I always have to preface with that as well because that could also be a factor into um, how difficult it was for me to gain the respect of my colleagues. So. Um, for example, I was in a meeting once and actually not just once, multiple times where we would be brainstorming about a, a feature that we wanted to uh, work on or, you know, a user story. And I would have an idea and I would say, hey, guys, you know, what if we do this? Um, and people would be like, oh, it's the little girl is talking. Just ignore her. Let's just move on. And then like five, ten minutes later, one of my male colleagues said the exact same thing that I said. And people would be like, oh yeah, like that's a great idea. You know, and so for me, that was um, one of the ways that I felt, maybe not like I was a minority, but more that it was really hard for me um, to gain the respect of, of my colleagues and, and to show them that I wasn't just there just to be there. You know, like I was there to be part of the team and to contribute and that they needed to let me contribute. Um, and that I worked hard to get to where I was and that I was in the same room as they were, right? So like, why can't, why don't they let me contribute? Um, but what actually was a positive experience that came from that was whenever something like that would happen, um, my male colleague who would have that idea of the same one that I said and um, had said it out loud and everyone agreed, they would be like, oh, actually that was Nadine's idea. And that little shift of like giving me the credit of um, you know, oh, she actually is someone that we should listen to was actually really powerful because after that, um, a lot of my male colleagues would start, you know, slowly um, listen to what I also had to say and to actually think that I could contribute to the conversation as well. So for me, I think like as someone who um, has gone through it, <laughs> I think male colleagues um, should really start thinking about, um, you know, listening a little bit more to the conversations that um, they have with, with their female counterparts. Um, talk to your daughters, talk to you know your uh, female colleagues, talk to your wives, talk to your sisters, you know, and just kind of see like the little nuances like that, that you may not think is a big deal, but actually contributes a lot to like how we see ourselves as well um, in the workforce. Um, and I remember Claire, when we were having uh, our discussion a couple of days ago, we were saying that the first step was actually self-awareness, right? If, if there are men who are in this conversation who are already asking these questions of, oh, how do I contribute to this cause? I think that that's already, and I think you agree with me, Claire, that this is the, the first step to for it to, you know, 
go somewhere to move forward, I guess. And the second is to start having that conversation and to start asking the questions. Um, so yeah, not sure if you wanted to to add anything to that. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think I think it's also mm -hmm. very it's very personal and you and people have to find the why for them. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that can be can, can be subtly different. Um, you know, for me, it's a combination of things. Uh, you know, more diverse teams um, uh, are, are, you know, are better at problem solving. They um, they, they can get to um, more interesting and and more um, uh, qualified humanistic. Um, uh, you know, they can they can take all sorts of aspects into um, solving problems, uh, and that can be around technology as much as, as anything else. Um, having that mm -hmm. more. Uh, having the opportunity for everybody to have their say um, is also, you know, important uh, personally. But then when you start kind of exploding it up at a macro level, um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's the research um, unequivocally shows that you know, organisations with more diverse um, leadership teams and more diverse workforces outperform on uh, you know, depending on how you want to measure success, if you measure success financially um, or you know, customer satisfaction, employee satisfaction, all those sorts of measures are um, are certainly um, reflected as much more positive for those organisations mm -hmm. that are more diverse. Um, it, it, you, you could argue there's the whole economic socio-demographic opportunity. How do you um, create uh, job opportunities for um, people of all uh, of all shapes and sizes and genders and um, ages and experiences? Uh, um, and you know, it's it's a more at a, at a kind of low level. It's a it's a more engaging way to work. So there are so many different angles to it. Um, whether you feel it's a socially responsible thing, an economically responsible thing, a, a commercially viable thing, you you need to find your why, and then you need to be able to develop your voice, and that comes out through those conversations. They're really really key. Um, yeah, and and I I think the uh, an organization's culture, especially a really large and influential organization culture actually also translates a lot into the tech the technological no the technology communities culture as well i'm sorry <laughs> that was that just came out really weird um but yeah so for example like i i when i was first starting out um i was invited to speak at a conference and i remember um it was a panel discussion very similar to this one with like a lot more people and um i you know each speaker who came out was being introduced and all the other uh speakers were all males and um they were all being introduced as you know an engineer in this company accomplished this thing created this feature and when i came out instead of uh talking about my accomplishments, they talked about my looks, or they talked about the fact that I was a female, they singled me out, the fact that I was a female. Um, and I always found it to be very disturbing that they thought that the way that I looked or my gender was my accomplishment um, mm. versus the the work that I had actually done um, to, you know, uh, to create features or to create a better product for my organization. Um, so I, I think, once a lot more companies and a lot more organizations started talking about female empowerment and equal rights and the fact that we should be a little bit more, that's kind of when I saw a lot of the shift of the conversations in these conferences and in these events happening was, oh, you know, this, um, if this company doesn't think that uh, you know, we should be demeaning women, then maybe I shouldn't either, right? And I can see kind of the shift now, um, especially in Indonesia, where a lot of the events are um, a lot more female focused, or I guess a lot more female friendly, which is really, really nice to see. So, okay. yeah. No, oh, that's fantastic. Um, uh, so going back to your achievements at Generation Girl, which I have to keep saying, so, I mean, I'm amazed, you know, to have uh, 18,000 social media, you know, social followers, you know, through your campaign of, you uh, going to the, you know, call it the, the, the consumers of your service. To get, you know, you use yeah. girls rather than schools and, and uh, mm -hmm. um, teachers, I understand, to actually promote the program um, and that uh, uh, and use those, those voices to amplify. You also talked about a recent project you've done um, with uh, some kind of internships or buddying up um, with a partner mm -hmm. organisation and some of the feedback that came from not just the girls doing that program but the, the people they worked with. Um, Sure, yeah. the group here would love to hear a little bit about that. 
Yeah, so um, I was telling Claire a little bit about this program called Outreach that we did with one of the unicorn companies in Indonesia, um, where we had 10 girls from our organization be partnered up with mentors from the um, their engineering team. Um, and because there are not enough female leaders, we didn't have enough uh, females um, to actually be mentored with our girls. And so we ended up also having to have male uh, mentors as well, which is totally fine. Um, I just preferred if, you know, that I, I wasn't sure what the dynamic was going to be like if uh, we did have male mentors. Um, so this program was, they were uh, paired up one-on-one -on -one, and for the, la for the next uh, three months, they would uh, speak every week and create some sort of project together. Um, and at the end of those three months, they, we would have a big demo day where uh, we would invite uh, people, we would, we would invite the public basically to come in and see uh, what they did in, in these three months with their mentors. Um, and what was really surprising was that even though the girls were like, oh yeah, this was a really great project and you know, I was really excited about it, we actually got an overwhelming amount of, um, of feedback from the male mentors being like, that was an incredible experience um, because I think they had never thought about the fact that they uh, had never seen a young girl accomplish something in these fields before. Um, and so they were like, I, I honestly thought that they were gonna like make a blog post and like call it a day, but they actually created like, we had a girl who actually created an entire e-commerce um, app, like front end, back end, everything in like three months. And his, her mentor was like, I don't, I couldn't even do this. Like I, whenever she would ask me questions, like I would have to Google it and pretend I knew the answer and then get <laughs> back to her. Um, so like they were just so genuinely surprised. And that was something that we found as well when we first start, we were first starting our programs was these girls, I think because they're millenn or they're Gen Z, right? So they're literally born with devices in their hands. And so we don't really have to teach them a lot about the computer literacy anymore. And it's more about like just giving them the confidence to actually go and create these amazing products. Um, and that was something that, uh, you know, was really impactful for the male mentors who were like, I had never knew that someone so young and like a female could do this. And now I want my little sister to come and do this program. Like, you know, I want, uh, I want everyone uh, who's like younger to go and, you know, create something because I know that they can do it now. And I think that was a really powerful experience for them was, was to see that uh, people that they didn't think could do it could actually create something powerful. That's yeah. amazing. I, I, I love that story. And um, John has just joined us, uh, reminding us that we've uh, um, pretty much got to wrap up. I noticed that there aren't any, any specific questions that have come up in, um, in the online chat. Uh, although I probably should have reinforced for people that uh, welcome to keep the conversation going. Um, it's been an absolute delight to uh, to hear more about uh, Generation Girl, and I'm sure that the API Days community um, uh, and participants here will uh, will be very inspired. Um, where, where should they go if they want to find out more about the program? Yeah, you can uh, go to our website, generationgirl.org, and everything's already there. Everything's there, and you tweet and yeah. you... Uh, <laughs> You know, all of that sort of stuff. So thank you. Yes, thank you very exactly. much. It's been a delight to see you. Thank you so much. Very thank you, API Days. For your success. Thank Thanks. You. Bye. Thank you very Bye. much, Nadine.